Every American Mahjong player has their own style and preferred strategy. When any player gets their drawn tiles, they have a vision for where that hand could go based on their style and preferred strategy. That being said, there are certain strategies that apply specifically to American Mahjong that can set any hand up for success. And I'm gonna share them with you in this video. I'm going to play a game of solitaire. During the solitaire game, I'm going to walk you through a strategy called strategy by wall. Also during the Charleston, I'm going to be sharing some guidelines for when to pass blind and when to stop the Charleston. These ideas can really set you up for success during the Charleston and heading into the pick and discard phase of the game, give you an advantage more times than not. If you wanna download these handouts that I use when I do my lessons, there are links below the video. They're all the same format, a very small, compact. There's one for core strategy, one for when to pass blind, and one for when to stop the Charleston. So during this lesson, I'm going to read from these cards. So bear with me through that process. Let's get going with this game of solitaire and see what happens. These tiles are built into rows right now. Envision them at a four player table though, because when you play with four people, it's going, the walls are gonna be in a square. So just envision them that way, four walls. That's the whole idea behind strategy by wall. The first thing that we're gonna do is deal the tiles. I'm gonna deal 14 to east, 13 to southwest and north. Everybody has their tiles. Since we dealt the tiles, we now have two and a half walls. For the begin game, arrange your tiles in order of jokers, flowers, winds, dragons, in suit, in order, because it's gonna reveal certain patterns. Some people might want to put their like numbers together, like all their ones, twos, threes, but that only reveals like numbers. It won't reveal other patterns. So start out in order, in suit, winds, dragons, flowers, all together, and figure out which category to play, then rearrange your tiles. If you have multiples, it's best to build around them. American Mahjong is a game of multiples. If you do not have multiples, figure out what you can play as far as a category by using as many tiles as you can. Once you form a multiple through the Charleston, reassess and build around the multiple. If the choice is still not clear, consecutive run is the best category to play because it is the most flexible. There are nine tiles, one through nine, dots, bams, cracks, lots of flexibility. If you pick four or five numbers in a range in, in, for consecutive run, there will be lots of options for you to play. Set all your unwanted tiles to the right. Those will be your Charleston passes. When you pass, try to pass defensively. Pass a different number in each suit, far apart from each other. The next one, pass a single win or dragon with two different numbers in two different suits. Try not to pass the same category. Try not to pass the same suit. Try not to pass white dragons, like numbers and pairs and flowers. Those are all very valuable tiles and it's best to, tr to hold on to them through the Charleston and then discard them if you're not gonna use them. One of the keys is not to focus on what hand you're gonna play, but focus on the category you're gonna play and gather tiles for that category. That's gonna give you the greatest flexibility. 
for the begin game. Let's look and see what east was dealt. I think it's best to arrange your tiles in a certain order to reveal the initial shape of the hand. Later, you can rearrange your tiles based on the choices that you've made, whether by category or a specific hand. Jokers, flowers, winds, and dragons, numerical order by suit. And that'll give you a good view of what you have to work with. In this case, we have a pair of flowers and a pair of sevens. All the rest are singles. We do have some consecutive run potential with seven and eight. I think that's what we should focus on here. Maybe five, six, seven, and eight. And here we can pick a pass right away. Okay, so here we have maybe consecutive run, maybe like numbers. We have our pass. Now let's look and see what we can do for south. Wind suits in numerical order. So let's see what we have to work with. We have a pair of eights. We clearly have consecutive run there, but we also have some two, four, six, eight. Two, two, six, eight. We have no four though, that's a gap. Anytime you have a gap, you should downgrade that choice. I think we should probably work on consecutive run and we can pass these, building around the six. For American Mahjong, building around multiples is the strongest strategy in most cases. And also in this case, we're using most of our tiles around the eight. So I think this is a good strong plan. Let's just look and see if there's anything else we can do. I was thinking maybe we could play an addition hand, eight plus two equals 10, but we have no one, no white dragon and no flowers. Those are gaps. Just think about gaps. They should lower the choice as far as priority. Let's look and see what we can do for West. Flower, West, Red, couple of dots, six, eight, nine, including a multiple, two, eight, seven, eight, nine. I'm thinking they're in a similar situation as this player. So let's focus on consecutive run. Building around the eight. Maybe we could keep the two in case evens come in, two, four, six, eight, and we have tiles we can pass here. Let's see what we can do for north. Joker, dragons, one, three, four, one, two, three, five, seven, two, five, in another suit. We have mixed suits, no multiples. This happens all the time. When you have no multiples, you want to go systematically through the categories quickly and identify the category that uses the most of your tiles. Then you're going to gather tiles for that category. Once a multiple forms, you reassess building around the multiple. So for this player, we have either little odds, one, three, five, or one, two, three, four. one, three, five, or one, two, three, four. I think we are gonna have to give up on something here because I don't wanna pass two dragons. So you wanna think about what you're passing as well as what, you're, what choices you're gonna be making for your own hand. You wanna build your hand first and then pass defensively second. During the Charleston, you may be tempted to pass blind but there are some great guidelines that you can follow to make that decision.
During the Charleston, the purpose is to gather chiles for whatever it is that you've decided that you want to play, whether it's a category or a specific hand. So when you pass blind, you're doing a couple of things. One, you're announcing to the rest of the players that you're zeroing in on your intentions. The other thing is that you could be passing tiles that you need or risky tiles to somebody else. So consider this, if you are between categories, don't pass blind. Whittle down to one category by using as many tiles as you can to support the category that is the strongest, maybe the one that has the multiple or the one that has the most of the tiles. If you have gaps in any one of those categories, pick the one that doesn't have a gap, but don't pass blind. Whittle down your options. Same thing if you're between hands in one category, let's say. You want to pick the hand that has the most tiles or the strongest multiples or no gaps. If you are committed to one hand and you have four discards, or if you're committed to a hand with three discards, don't pass blind. Just risk the pass during the option or the cross pass. You can maybe sacrifice a tile and recover later. But if you pass blind, you're going to be giving information away to your opponents and you could be losing out on tiles. If you have four discards or three discards, pass fully and accept that incoming pass. Do the cross pass and then your final right. If you're con committed to a hand with two discards or if you're playing a pair hand and you have three discards, consider passing blind. That would be the point when I might pass blind or maybe even consider stopping the Charleston. The purpose of the Charleston is to strengthen your hand. If you stop the Charleston, you are going to miss out on the potential of accepting nine more tiles in your hand that can lead you to a strong position going into the pick and discard phase of the game. So if you're between categories, don't stop the Charleston. Pick the category that has no gaps, maybe uses the most of your multiples or the most of your tiles basically by process of elimination, you can come up with some tiles to pass from the other category that you are considering. If you are between hands in one category, don't stop the Charleston, pick a hand. That will release some of those tiles so that you can then continue with the second Charleston. If you're committed to one hand and you have four or fewer tiles, or if you're playing a hand and you have three discards, don't stop the Charleston. Continue because there are still three more passes, nine tiles that can strengthen your hand. Now, if you're committed to a hand and you have two discards, or if you're playing a pair hand with three discards, that's when you might wanna stop the Charleston. If you stop the Charleston, you still qualify to do the optional cross. But anytime someone stops the Charleston, that is an indicator that they're narrowing in on their hand. So you may not get to do an optional cross because the player across from you may realize that and decline. So be prepared for that. They're not being rude, they're playing defensively because they're not gonna to wanna to give you tiles to help you get to that stronger position. Don't stop the Charleston if you're between categories, between hands, or if you have four discards 
maybe even three. Consider continuing, maybe even sacrificing a tile during that cross pass so that you can get to the final right and then complete the Charleston. It's best to complete both Charlestons if you can. Let's just look at the little odds hands really quick and see if there's something we can do with those dragons there. There are some mixed suit hands with dragons. Now we have a, a nice batch here of dots with the dragon. We have no flowers and we have a joker. So I don't think we should pick a pair hand. I think we should, there are, there are two different hands that use dragons in consecutive run. One of them matches, the other is the opposite. Let's keep the dragons and pass the two. Okay, we're ready to pass. We're gonna use this to help us. East passes to south. South to west, west to north, and north down to east. So that was the first pass. So let's see how things change. We're looking for seven, eight, nine. We picked up a seven. I'm kind of thinking maybe like numbers is pretty good. I would not pass one suit. That's kind of on that worst case scenario there. I would not pass that. I think probably passing these would be better. One of each suit and focus on like numbers with sevens. There is a news with like numbers on the mock card. If you haven't downloaded the mock card, look for a link below the video. All right, so we're gonna focus on like numbers. There are two hands in like numbers that we could do. One with news, and we have a south, and then one without where we need flowers and two kongs of sevens. We've got the flowers right there. Oh, three kongs of sevens. We need seven cracks. Okay, here we go. We're gonna look here now. We're looking for six, seven, eight, nine. Four numbers in a range, five numbers in a range. There are some five number ranged hands in consecutive run. Here, let's see if we can make this better. Right now we have two cracks and a dot. If we put a bam in there, now we have one of each suit, which is a little bit better. That's gonna leave us with like numbers. If we get everything we want, we may have to pass like numbers. Let's mix that up just a little and give up the three. We still have one of each suit, but we're left with a one three for the next pass if we get what we want. So think about your current pass, then think about the next pass if you can. Let's look and see what we can do for West. We're looking for six, seven, eight, nine. Why is this in here? We don't need that. And we can pass those. Six, eight, nine, seven, eight, nine. Flower, dragon. Okay, we can pass those. Oh, I think I was thinking two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight, which we didn't get. Okay, here we got keepers, one, three. Three, one. I'm thinking maybe we could play a pair hand or one suit. One, two, three, four, five. We could use this for the missing four, maybe. One, two, three. Let's see if there's if we can use that mixed suit dragon. I don't think so. We have too many dots. Let's go ahead and give up the dragon. We can pass three west red. And then that way we're left with a 1-4, which is pretty innocuous for another pass. Okay, so we're ready to go. We're focused on consecutive run, consecutive run, consecutive run, like numbers. Now we're going to do the cross pass. East and west will pass. And north and south. We were looking for sevens. We got a west though. Sevens with news. So here's a really good pass. One of each suit. Now it's a little risky because we have a two, three consecutive and a three, five. There's always gonna be some risk in every pass. 
You just want to mitigate the risk and pass and pass as innocuously as possible. Let's see what we can do for south. We've got a west red three. The west might come in handy. There is a consecutive run hand concealed with news. Let's pass these three here. And look at west. Ooh, we got an eight dot. If we're collecting seven, eight, nine, five, six, seven, eight, nine, that might be helpful. We have two tiles to pass. Maybe the red can go. This is pretty risky. Two, four, red. There are definitely going to be hands that can be used there, both in consecutive run and evens. I would not pass that. I would break it up. Maybe let's keep the five for a potential consecutive run there. There are a few hands that use one suit. The eight, though, I think I would want to keep that for potential like numbers with eights. Let's pass nine, four, red. Nines and fours are pretty far apart, so even though it's the same suit, they're far apart, that might be okay. We got the four. One through five. We don't have to pick a hand till we run out of discards. Let's pass those three. We did a cross. Now we're going to do first left. East passes up to north. North to west, west to south, and then south to east. No keepers. We got a nine. And we have tiles to pass. We don't have to pick a hand yet. We have six, seven, eight, nine, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's some flexibility in there. I'm thinking if we had to pick a hand at this point, maybe this last hand under consecutive run, three consecutive numbers with news. We're pretty light in the winds though. Let's see. Here we're looking for five, six, seven, eight, nine, five through nine, building around the eights. Now we did get a four for a potential two, four, six, eight. Let's just see if we could maybe switch to two, four, six, eight. Two, eight, eight, four, six, eight. Let's switch to two, four, six, eight, leveraging the eights. And we can pass those three. We could maybe, yeah, uh, we could maybe make that a little better by passing one, five, seven, being left with a three, nine. Okay, let's see what we have up here. We got a two. One, two, three, four, five. And we have tiles to pass. Now this is getting a little risky. The deeper you go into the Charleston, the more risky the passes can get. So don't feel too bad about that. Build your hand first, then think about defense in your passing. When you get close to a hand, the risk may be worth it. Let's pass second left, east to north, north to west, west to south, south to east. No keepers, we're looking for sevens. This is going to be six, one half dozen, the other. Let's pass those three. Okay, we got a seven. We have two tiles to pass. This is when you pick a hand. When you run out of discards, we need three tiles to pass. We're going across, which is obligatory. So we need to pick a hand. I think maybe we could give up the nine, but this is pretty risky. That's one category, odds. So we have six, seven, eight, nine, six, seven, eight, five, six, seven. Okay, let's look at those those hands in there. Um, eight, nine, eight, nine, dragon. It'd be nice if we could use the eight and the nine. Five, six, seven, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's give up the west and break this up a little. We got a two. 
two, four, six, eight. Let's pass these three. A little bit risky. Three nine for three six nine. Three five little odds. Five seven five nine odds. It's getting a little risky. We got a three. And we have tiles to pass. Look at that pass. But look at these tiles. We could play the very first hand under consecutive run. Pair, Pung, Kong. We can use this to help with the four. And then all we need is a pair for the five. This hand is set. I'm going to risk passing all of those. This is when that's going to be worth it because we're set with each of these blocks. We got a pair. This can be a pung eventually with a two dot. This could become a kong, which we need. And then here, pung, finally a pair. So we're gonna pass across now. East and west passed. South and north. No keepers. Let's make that a little better. Two, five, nine. It's a little bit better. No keepers. Now the dragons, yeah, I don't think they're going to be helpful. Five, I'm thinking the five, six, seven, eight, nine to leverage the eight and the nine. Let's see here. So let's see, eight, oh, wrong, wrong one there. Seven, eight, six. If we can get a six crack, we could do six crack, seven, eight, nine. Let's pass the seven and break this up a little bit. Four, two, four, six, eight. I would not pass this. This is passing like numbers. That's almost as bad as passing a pair, and it matches the red. I would break that up and maybe give up one of these tiles here. So let's look at the 2468 category. This is when you need to whittle down your options or maybe even pick a hand because we've run out of discards. So here we have a full 2468. That's probably the strongest pattern right now for this player. There are three two, four, six, eight, one suit hands. One uses flowers. There's also two, four, six, eight with news, but we have no wins. And then there's one, two, four, six, eight with no flowers. There is a two, four, six, eight pair hand with dragons, but we, and we have the red. Let's keep the red. Cause maybe we could play the pair hand, two, four, six, eight pair hand, second hand down. So let's, let's keep the eights just in case like numbers comes in. And this process of elimination will review, reveal discards. So let's pass those three. A little risky. Now we could do two, four, six, eight dragon, but this is the wrong suit. We would need two, four in dots, six, eight in bams, and then cracks. So this two, four, is the wrong suit. No keepers there. All right, we went second across. Now we're gonna do last right. East passes to south. South to west, west to north, and then north down to east. No keepers. We're looking for sevens or wins. We already have a west. So we can pass those. We got a nine, a five, and a two. We really want specific tiles because of where our multiples are right now. Eight, nine, five, six, seven in bands, eight, nine in two other suits. Let's go ahead and pass those. Here we're looking for two, four, six, eight. We did pick up a red dragon. And we can pass these. Now this is one suit, but we have a one, three, and then a seven. So at least there's a big odd in there. 
I would still, let's see, do we really need all those eights? I think we can break this up. And pass those three. It's a little bit better. And I don't think we need those eights at this point now that we have the dragon. If we can get a white dragon, we could really play that nice pair hand. We wanted dots. We got cracks and bams. Even though they're consecutive, this is pretty solid. So now we're going to do optional cross. This is when you negotiate a cross from you up to three tiles. So we're going to pass all full passes here. East and west pass. And north and south pass. We got a seven. Three discards for like numbers. We could play all sevens or sevens with news if we get the north and the east. Both of those hands use a pair of flowers. And then we can use these jokers with the sevens, potentially. Three discards. That was a successful Charleston. If you have three discards or four discards or less, I'd say that was a success. Let's see here what we have for South. No keepers. They have a hot mess. Three complete discards, maybe even the white, and they can't keep all these. They probably have about six discards. Really not good. Maybe we could use the white corresponding with the dots. Not sure yet. No keepers here. Now there is a 2468 with news. No flowers though. 2468 with news. Let's keep that. And we can pass that. Oh, we're done passing. These are just cards. We wanted dots, and we're done with the Charleston. We just finished the begin game. The begin game is the Charleston. Now we're moving into the middle game, which is the second and third wall. For the middle game, stay concealed as long as you can. Before you claim the first discard to make an exposure, make sure that you have an X by your hand as opposed to a C. Because if you take an exposure and realize later that you're playing a concealed hand, you're committed already with that exposure. Watch what other players are discarding, if you can and also what they're exposing. You can try to figure out what category they're playing and then change your plans accordingly. If I have, for example, a Kong of threes out and I'm focused on three, six, nine, and somebody exposes nines, maybe I can change my hand to consecutive run because I needed those nines. So keep your eye on not only the discards, but also the exposures. Commit to a single category at the end of the second wall. Commit to a single hand by the end of the third wall. In regards to joker bait, which would be a pair or a pung of any tile, what you'll do is hold those tiles, even if you don't need them, and then during the pick and discard phase of the game, usually in the middle of the third wall, discard one. Maybe someone will make an exposure with a joker and use that second one to exchange a joker. That's how joker bait works. But you want to get rid of it by the end of the third wall because going into the fourth wall, people are getting ready to win at that point, most likely. And you want to get rid of joker bait, fresh tiles, valuable tiles like flowers, dragons, winds maybe, before the end of the third wall. Right now, what we want to focus on is staying concealed as long as possible. Reassess your hand if new multiples form. Do not claim a discard until you are at least ready to commit to a hand. We're committed here to like numbers. We're committed here to consecutive run, evens, consecutive run. Everybody's pretty well committed. So claiming discards would be okay for all of these situations at the moment. 
Here we go. We're going to discard for east. Let's start with the eight die. And we're going to use this to mark whose turn it is. We'll draw. Now here we can already consider taking that, but we don't even know what hand they're playing. They are so in between. I would not commit to a pung of eights. They have no joker, so they can't make it a Kong, which is a little more useful. But here, I would not claim that. I would draw. They got a six. Six, seven, eight. Let's discard the three van. We're going to draw up here. Nobody can take the three van. We got an eight van. Let's discard the one ban. Those are all discards. We're gonna draw for north. Nine ban. Okay, now there is joker bait. Clearly they do not need a nine ban, but we're gonna hold it. Let's discard the two crack. And now we're gonna draw for east. We got a five ban. We're focused on like numbers here. Let's discard that three crack. And now we're gonna draw up here. Joker, that's gonna be helpful. We don't need these. We really don't have to pick a hand till we run out of discards. So we're gonna throw that two crack and just hang tight. Let's draw. One crack. There's joker bait. Let's hold it. Clearly we don't need it, but maybe we could use it. Let's discard the nine bam. Nobody can take it. Up here, it's their turn. They have a nine bam and nobody took that nine bam, so this joker bait may or may not come to fruition. So just keep an eye on any tiles that you have for joker bait. If they're discarded and nobody acts on it, you may or may not find success with that. A crack. We don't need that. So now we've had two rounds of discards. We're still picking through the second wall and it's east turn. North, news. Wow, yeah, this is coming in nicely. We can Kong here, Kong here. I think we can discard those. News with like numbers and flowers. Oh, we don't need the flowers for new. Yes, we do. Here we go. We're gonna discard by bam. We're gonna draw. Six crack, that's consecutive. Six, eight, nine, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's discard the four crack. We still don't have to pick a hand. Come there next discard, we probably will need to pick a hand. Let's draw. We got a two ban. Two, four, six, eight dragons. Let's get rid of that eight crack. Still got options. We're gonna draw. Six ban. Let's get rid of this five crack. And now we can draw for this player here. Four dot. Yeah, we don't want that. Or right, any three bam is out. Let's throw that. Let's draw here. Five dot. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's that first hand under consecutive run. We now have to decide what to do. You know, the six, four, five, six, five, six, seven, eight, nine in BAMs for that second hand from the bottom, or the third, let's see, second hand from the bottom never came in really. Let's discard the five BAM. We'll focus here for now. Keep these for options. Five, six, seven. If we could get an eight BAM, we could play five, six, seven, eight, bam, nine, crack. These might be the next discards. Let's draw. Flower. Now we can discard the ones. Let's keep the west for options. But since we have those flowers, 
I think we should maybe think about committing to the third hand down. Four flowers, pair of two, pair of four, pung of six, pung of eight. This could be joker bait. We could still play news with two, four, six, eight, the concealed hand, and use these as joker bait. Let's discard the one crack. So you just go through a process of elimination and make a choice. Let's draw for north. Four van. We don't need that. Let's discard it. They need that, but you cannot call for a pair. You got to draw it yourself. Same with singles, like the east. We have to draw that ourselves. So let's draw. Four crack. That's a discard. And we're going to draw four south. Two crack. Yeah, we don't need that. It's already been thrown a couple times. Now we're going to draw for west. Seven crack. The one was thrown. Let's discard that. And we're going to draw four north. One crack. That's been discarded. You always want to keep your eye on discards and discard likewise. At this point, you want to hold tiles that are fresh because you might end up getting a joker out of them. Discard tiles that have been discarded if you don't need them. Let's draw. Two ban. None of these are going to be helpful. Let's hold the seven, though. Let's throw this two ban. And then we're going to draw here. Now, we want to make sure that we don't want that. So we might say, wait. At the table, it's okay to say, wait. There is the first hand that uses a calm, but we have no jokers. We can't call it. We only have two. I think that probably still the third hand down is best for them. They're a little weak with the four at the moment. Let's see what happens. We're going to draw. We got a six bam. Now that we got rid of that five, let's discard it. So that's the uh, six bam is out. That's one they need, but they only have one. You cannot, this is not a game where you can pick up a discard and put it in your hand. If you claim a discard, you have to make an exposure that completes that block. In this case, this particular block for that hand, the third hand down, we need three and we only have one. So we do not qualify to call that. We have to drop. White dragon. That is a potential keeper for that pair hand. Second hand down under singles and pairs. Pair, two, four, six, eight pairs of the opposite dragons. Let's discard the seven crack. And it's this player's turn. This player could take the seven, but I think that they're better off with news and sevens. They're set. They're just waiting for seven dot or seven bam, more jokers, and they'll be good to go. Let's draw. Nine dot. That's a discard. So we just got through the second wall. We're now going into the third wall. For the middle game, stay concealed as long as you can. Before you claim the first discard to make an exposure, make sure that you have an X by your hand as opposed to a C. Because if you take an exposure and realize later that you're playing a concealed hand, you're committed already with that exposure. Watch what other players are discarding, if you can and also what they're exposing. You can try to figure out what category they're playing and then change your plans accordingly. If I have, for example, a Kong of threes out and I'm focused on three, six, nine, and somebody exposes nines, maybe I can change my hand to consecutive run because I needed those nines. So keep your eye on not only the discards, but also the exposures. Commit to a single hand or a single category at the end of the second wall. Like numbers, consecutive run, evens, consecutive run. Everybody's where they need to be. We just finished the second wall, so everybody's good. Commit to a single hand by the end of the third wall. Right now, this player's not sure. This player's in between a single and pair hand or maybe one or two even hands. This player knows their hand, first hand under consecutive run. 
This player probably news with seven, so two of them know what they're playing. These two, not so sure. But they have time. We've got the third wall to go through. In regards to joker bait, which would be a pair or a pung of any tile, what you'll do is hold those tiles, even if you don't need them, and then during the pick and discard phase of the game, usually in the middle of the third wall, discard one. Maybe someone will make an exposure with a joker and use that second one to exchange a joker. That's how joker bait works. But you want to get rid of it by the end of the third wall because going into the fourth wall, people are getting ready to win at that point, most likely. And you want to get rid of joker bait, fresh tiles, valuable tiles like flowers, dragons, winds maybe, before the end of the third wall. We're going to go through the third wall. It's this player's turn. They got a north. We only need one. Let's discard the four dot and draw here. This player wants that four dot for a pung. First hand under consecutive run. So turns get skipped. We're up here. We're going to discard six bam. That's the second six bam. This player can't take it. They're going to need jokers now. So let's draw one bam. Drawing for this player. Six dot. Six, seven, eight. Very strong there. Six, seven, eight. Three suit. Three numbers. Six, seven, eight. Or five, six, seven. Six, seven, eight, let's say. Or five, six, seven. Eight, nine. Six, seven, eight. Six, seven, eight, nine, five, six, seven, eight, nine, maybe. Six, seven, eight, nine. This is why you want to gather, because look at all the flexibility we have. Either way, we didn't use that six crack, or the white dragon didn't come in either. But we can maybe play the pear hand if we can get flowers. Let's discard the six crack. So just go through a process of elimination to see what tiles are useful and discard the tiles that you don't touch. In that case, the six crack. Let's draw. Joker. So much for the pair hand. So I think fourth, third hand down, four flowers, two, four, pung of six, pung of eight. Let's go ahead and discard the west. We could still play that pair hand if we get the last six bam and then discard this and this. We're like two away from a pair hand here. Let's see what happens. West was thrown. Nobody can take it. We're going to draw. Six bam. That's not a keeper. This player is going to pung, so these turns get skipped. We're going to commit to that fourth hand down. Now we're still in a, a little weak position with that five or that four bam. Let's get rid of the white dragon. And now this red dragon here, this pair, that's joker bait. We need to get rid of that by the end of the third wall. Let's draw. East. That's not a keeper. Let's discard. East. This player needs it, but you cannot claim a single tile. For an exposure of singles. These are single tiles here. You have to draw these yourself or it needs to be your winning tile. That's the only time you can call a single tile to complete a block of singles. We're going to draw. That's a one bam. We're going to draw for south, north, we don't need that. Okay, we're gonna draw one dot. Don't need it. They don't need it either. They just need that pair. We need a three dot or a five. East. Okay, now this player's gonna get a little antsy because there's two out now. Nine crack. That can be discarded. Up here. 
five, six, seven, six, seven, eight, nine. We have to decide. I think five through nine is stronger than using this nine. I would not take it. I would draw. And in this case, it paid off. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's discard the eight crack. Let's draw here. Seven dot, we don't need that. We're gonna Kong it. Kong. We'll discard the North. And this is a safe discard. Nobody's wanted it. We're gonna draw. Four bam, that's a discard. Four bam. Now, this player's turn. That's the second four bam. Their hand is still viable. Seven crack, we'll discard that. We're in the middle of the third wall right now. We're gonna draw Joker. We needed that. We can use it here or here. We'll discard the nine bam and draw for this player. White dragon, that's not helpful. We're gonna draw here. Nobody can take that nine, that white dragon, so we're gonna draw eight bam. I could have kept that. Five, six, seven, eight, bam, nine crack. There's already a nine crack out, though. We would need our only joker, and we have only one eight, bam. I don't think that's too much to be worried about. We're going to draw south. Drawing for north. Five crack. Down here. Two dot. We'll discard that, and we're going to call it up here for a pung. And we'll discard the nine bam. They're ready to win on a five dot. One, two, three, four, five. Pair, pung, kong, pung, pair. Drawing for east. Six crack. Drawing for south, seven crack. We're focused on seven bands. Three dot, we'll discard that. Up here, they could take that. But that would really announce what they're doing. I'd rather stay concealed and go stealth mode. Fly under the radar. Three crack. Because we could be playing a two, four, six, eight hand. As far as any of these other players know. Let's discard the nine crack. And that joker bait is not going to really help. So we know those are safe tiles because nobody took that nine crack. Three crack. Drawing here. We need that four bam. Five dot. We'll discard that. And that's Mahjong. For this player. Five dot. Mahjong. First hand under consecutive run. And we didn't quite get through the middle game. So that was a pretty good timing. And they focused on one suit. They got the jokers, which helped. When you start getting close to the end of the third wall, make sure that you're discarding Joker bait. Those red dragons probably in the next two picks should have been just should be discarded. They were okay at the moment, but you want to get rid of Joker bait and fresh tiles in your hand by the end of the third wall because all the time that we've spent 
through the second and third wall. We're building our hands, giving your opponents time to get ready to take some of those fresh tiles and risky tiles at that. So try to get rid of those tiles by the end of the third wall. Going into the end game, which is the fourth wall, if you are unable to win, maybe your tiles are all in exposures or have been discarded, you should consider switching to pure defense and discard tiles that you know people don't need. And that will entail looking for discards that are out three numbers out of four, and you can pretty much be sure that that is a safe discard. Now keep in mind that there are singles in American Mahjong, namely the year. So keep that in mind. If you know you cannot win, discard tiles that have been previously discarded or are in exposures. You could also discard jokers. Nobody can pick up a joker that's been discarded. Don't claim any discards to make an exposure if you know you can't win. It just gives people information at the table. For example, if I expose a Kong of eight cracks and, an, and my opponent needs an eight crack, well, that'll give them information. So if you just stay concealed, bide your time, wait for the next game, and then push to win at that point. But don't make an exposure if you know you can't win. It's, it's fruitless, really. And it gives away information. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Be sure to click the bell if you do. That way you'll get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next strategy video, may all your picks be keepers.